Ta-da! Okay, so I've been digging, and this is what I've done. So I've decided to go for a 3x3 central corridor, and then I'm going to hang some nice, large 16x16s off the side. Now, I've chosen the dimensions and the depth of the door for a reason that I'll get to in a little bit. But uh, in the short term, I realize that I'm going to need, you know, I got this this haphazard room. It's kind of ugly. I got to dig another room across here, right? And um, I realized that I kind of got this scenario where I need to get a lot of bricks. Now, I've been digging up a ton of rocks, uh, and I've been stashing them back at my main base. Let's hop back over here. There we go. Right, and I realized that I actually kind of need to start uh, making building materials. Now, there's a whole bunch of things I could do. I think what I'm going to be using is Mine Factory Reloaded's uh, White Stone. So if I load up White Stone, you can see that there's a whole bunch of interesting things here, right? We have paved White Stone, White Stone Gravel, small White Stone Bricks, large White Stone Bricks, and smooth White Stone. To make these, you just need sugar and the regular thing. And so um, this is provided sort of as a one of the decorative brick options for Mine Factory Reloaded. And I think they look pretty cool. And they look really neat in that biome. Kind of a dry clinical feel. I think I'll go white stone for my sciency rooms and black stone for my magic rooms. And I have ideas for lighting that are not these ugly blue lights. I'm just using them as kind of an interim solution because they're so easy. Right? Do, do. So easy. But I realized that in order for me to do this, I'm going to need to, like, you know, cook up a ton of stone. A ton of stone. And these thermal expansion... Uh, machines. I love them. I love them. But they're really not up to the task, right? They're just not, <laughs> they're not going to do what I need to do. So with that in mind, I'm obviously going to have to do something to cook up a lot more stone. And uh, I actually think I have an idea. What I'm going to do is uh, cook up something for mechanism. Uh, you can see I've got my generator running here. I've got not a lot of coal, but I have a fair amount of power in there. Uh, 10 megajoules is not a small amount of power, and I'll, I'll probably reach that by the time the stack is burnt down. So what I need to do is build up a uh, uh, mechanism smelting factory. Let's see. Let's go factory here. You can see it's a basic factory, a advanced factory, and an elite factory. We don't need um, anything but the uh, basic for now, I think. So to make this, we're going to need a whole bunch of stuff for mechanism. Uh, we need some of this enriched alloy you've seen me use a few times so far. We need control circuits. We need gold dust. And we need an energized smelter. So why don't we build the energized smelter first? We need some regular cobble, a steel casing, and control circuits. So obviously, let's, got, let's go in and raid the osmium supplies, the strategic osmium reserve. We got a little bit of this enriched alloy as well, right? Uh, we're going to need some iron. And uh, it looks like we're going to need at least one bar of steel. Um, I think we're going to need more. So we better grab a little bit of coal. To make steel. Let's see if we have any steel over here. I might. This steel recipe, oh, it sounds so great. It sounds, sounds so easy to just make steel by using tons of coal. It is not a great call. Let's see if we can just go like this. Kind of suck it all up. All right. Uh, so obviously I need to cook up a little bit more steel. Scary. Let's get over here. Grab some more coal here. And uh, we'll cook up half a stack of steel. Well, I'm leaving less than half a stack. We're going to cook up eight steel, okay? I can do math. Boom. And let's pick that up. Thank you. Toss it in here. Thank you. And let's eat a little bit of bread. All right, so while that's cooking up, um, we should have enough in a second to do what we need to do. But in the interim, uh, let's take a look again at that uh, energized smelter. All right, so um, we also need some of these control circuits that are more osmium and enriched alloy. No problem. No problem. That I think we just have on us. Yes, two of those. We're actually going to need to grab more of these. So let's do that and let's make a f we'll make a few more when we need them. How are we doing on steel? Fantastic. Right. Okay, so energized smelter. We need a steel casing. One please. Uh, we're going to need some um, also going to need a little bit of uh, regular cobblestone. This is the underground biomes ecologite cobblestone which sort of follows me around by the way. I don't understand why exactly but it seems to. Uh, I'm all, I've always got it. And we need some glass. I think I have some glass. I do. Okay. That should be everything we need to make this. We have an energized smelter. All right. Now, uh, if I were to just place this, I can show you what it's like. Right? This, you know, allows us to toss in uh, and, and smelt things. But it's kind of not where we want to stop. It's uh, sort of unexceptional. All right. What we'd like to do is upgrade it further. 
So let's look at the uh, factory. And with this, we'll be able to cook up stone a lot more quickly. Um, all right, so we're going to need four more basic circuits, some pulverized gold. Wow. Okay. Well, that means we're obviously going to need a lot more of this enriched alloy. So we should go grab some uh, redstone. And we should grab some uh, iron. And we should come over here and we can actually oh, nope, use our integrated crafting table for this one. As I recall, it's isn't it like this? Yes. Let's just make half a stack. I'm not really hurting for resources. It's funny how I have very little in the way of uh, very little in the way of craft or crafting resources, but I actually have a fair amount of everything else. Okay, um, so that's cooking up. Let's make the uh, circuits that we need. I think we have enough for those. Um, at least some of them. And the reason I keep going back over to this crafting table um, is that's not make that one. That one's terrible. Right. The reason I've been going back and over and doing this so much is that uh, I can use any eye to auto populate things here, but I can't on my power glove. It's a bug. I think it's fixed in a new version, but we did a lot of updates to the mod pack earlier in the week, and everybody's like, Dave, slow down. And so I said, okay, I'll slow down. Right. Um, so we should have that. What else are we missing? What else are we lack? Pulverized gold. Okay, well, it's fortuitous for us. That that machine is busy, it won't let, won't let things inject. So we can just pull things out here while that furnace is busy. One, two, pulverized gold. Okay, how about now? Do we have everything we need? Uh, what are we missing? What do we lack? We have the pulverized gold. We have the four circuits. We have the energized smelter. We have the enriched alloy. Uh, is it just NEI derping? That goes th there. That goes there. That goes there. And these go on the outside, right? Okay, it's just NEI derping. All right, we have a basic factory now. Check this guy out. Three slots! That's right, three slots, okay? Now, we can actually take it even further if we were to go and grab some more control circuits, make some diamond dust, right? Which uh, I think we should do. I think we should do it. And, uh, well, I mean, why not, right? And that will let us cook up a ton of stone. So let's see. Um, we need some more circuits. We got this. Um, we need, I think we have enough osmium to do it. We ought to. And uh, we need diamond dust. So let's see, where are we keeping? Uh, yes, we're keeping the diamonds over here in sort of a disorganized fashion. And we need two of those, yes? Yes. And this is still busy cooking. Looks like he's going to run it. He's running out of power. So let's boost that up. I'm always kind of amazed at how far I can get with just a few little engines. One of the nice parts about mind uh, the mind, mind, uh, sorry, Buildcraft power system is that if you want to get away with using very little power or you know very little infrastructure, you can. It's kind of funny. Okay, so um, hmm. uh, let's break this guy down. I shouldn't shouldn't judge. Maybe it's a girl. I just don't know. Uh, okay, and um, now we have that. Let's come over here. We need four more control circuits. So uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. I think we don't have enough osmium, do we? Have I run out of osmium? Could this be the end? Uh, let's see. If I just double click here and then run over here and then double click here. I really am out of osmium. I'm going to have to go mining. Okay, well, uh, wow. Here I was talking about how great we're doing on resources. This will have to, well, no. This will have to do, yes. So what we want to do is uh, set this guy up so that he can do a fair sum of work. To do that, I think what we're going to do is pluck this, uh, he's still working on that, pluck this hopper off, right? And we're going to put this hopper, uh, let's put one of these right here for now, right? And then we just pluck this hopper here. That should work, I think. All right, so now if I run over, Grab a couple of these. Oh, I hate to use that. Let's use all the ecologite, the, the plague of rocks that surrounds me. And uh, let's see, we just go over here. 
Sounds like someone's just come to my house. Or there's an Enderman in my room. If I turn around, there's an Enderman. I'm going to be very mad. Enderman? Enderman. Listen to me, Enderman. Where could he be? Aha. Uh -huh. Slenderman. Oh, you aren't getting away. Did you despawn? Ah. Hey, look. Saltpeter. I didn't even realize I had that there. <gasps> Burn. Are you gone? <sighs> Enderman. You know what, Enderman? I dislike you. Okay, well, not don't want to get sidetracked too much by the Enderman. But, whoa, that was a big jump. He's there. Suffice to say, I don't like him. End of story. Right. So, uh, we have, let's make, uh, so we got some cobblestone here. Let's put one stack there. Aha, look at it go. Cook, 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 cook. Not the fastest furnace, not the slowest furnace, but, uh, looks like it's not really nailing our power supplies. And we got cookstone right there. So everything's working as we expect. Okay. So then what I'd like to do is just take all of this stone and make it into cob regular cobblestone and cook it up for preparation of making smooth white stone. Um, you know, it's kind of funny to me that in actuality, it's a little rare to find these uh, these types of multi furnaces. You think that it'd be like the first thing everyone would want to make, right? That they'd all be like, oh, wow, perfect multi furnace, right? And, and yet it's kind of rare. Like there is a two slot furnace in industrial craft. And there are occasionally like a couple other things that come out there like, you know, oh yeah, like the medium stone technically. Let's see, so that goes there. I think that'll work just fine. I think you can load from that side. Uh, let's find out. Yeah, looks like we can. Look at that. So now we got three of these things coming along. Now my question is, one of the things that you can do with mechanism machines is upgrade them because we got a lot of stone to cook through here and we actually it's going to take a lot of power to do that as well and that's kind of my biggest concern is that i won't have enough power offhand to be able to do it and i don't want to run short find myself wanting in terms of power right so um what i'm going to need to do is come up with a, a plan Wait, this is already cobblestone what am i doing come up with a plan to, to power it in the interim. Now, I have a couple ideas. Um, water electrolysis is really possible. I, I had that working in a test world, and it looks like fun. Uh, let's toss more of this in, more of this in. Right. Uh, and a couple other things, but I sort of don't want to do it in this shanty that I'm living in, this shanty temple. Like, it's just not fun to, to do things and then know you're going to be throwing them away or totally redoing them. Yes, right. And it looks like our generator is keeping up. Uh, I really don't want to toss that much more. Looks like it's really gone. Uh, it's not being very efficient this way, is it? Because it, it can output a steady 10 kilowatts. So let's get rid of that. Let that guy finish burning his piece. And we'll let him burn through the uh, entire backlog. Stash away our valuable stuff. Uh... And we'll stash away this diamond dust for now. Real bummer about that. But uh, all right, so that's that's cooking. I'm going to go and I'm going to work on making some more of the house, knowing that I have this stuff cooking up and chunk loaded and ready to go. So I'm going to go continue to dig off camera. And I will get back to you as soon as I'm ready. Because I think the next thing I'm going to do... Whoa! A little bit of a server not quite keeping up with me. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is finish off this room, build a paired room so I have even more stone. Probably then um, work on decorating this and working on the door. And I'm going to need, I have a plan that involves using this area. I think it's going to be really cool. I think everybody's going to really like it. All right. Well, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, folks. So I have dug out a bunch more. And uh, I've been trying to keep this episode lively. I realized as I was doing this that I haven't actually done anything at all really interesting. I've told you about what's happened with the server. I've told you a little bit about the mod pack and what we're doing. But I haven't built anything even worth mentioning. So I've got these two 12 by 12s And I was thinking to myself, well, what's this going to look like once I put in all the, the stuff? 
all the bricks and stuff. And I kind of want it to be like this long secret base with little doors that you go into. Ah, doors. So what's that going to look like? Well, so um, I put together a few things. I have an idea what I'd like to do. And I've never done this before, and I've never seen it done before. I'm sure it has been. I've just never seen it. So uh, by raiding a dimensional doors dungeon, I got lucky and got a few sticky pistons. I could put them here, right? And now you'll see why I made the doors like this, right? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of the stained glass. You saw me use this early, in another earlier episode, but you basically combine clay and a... Uh, 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 dye, and you get ceramic dye, which you can use to dye glass. That's from Power Crystal's amazing Mine Factory Reloaded mod, which if you aren't using, you're crazy. Right, so now, there we go, and like so, we can close up the wall, but now we have this uh, cool door, right? It's kind of this caution yellow, don't enter the lab. I thought I'd use like the, the uh, kind of concordant bright blue for the other one, like you saw in my last one, right, for the magic room. And then maybe we'll have one thing over here that's not blocked off, that's like the visitor room, right? And they can sit down, they can have some tea, maybe we'll have something amusing for them to play with, right? But the question is, how am I going to operate these doors? I mean, traditionally we'd use pressure plates, and I can make that work. But it's not exactly what I want to do. It's not cool, right? It's not like high tech. What I want to do is make a door that feels awesome. And I thought back to like, what doors feel awesome? You know, what doors seem awesome? Besides beautiful mahogany doors, you know what was awesome? You ever play Metal Gear Solid? Uh, or any of the games came after and they had those cool doors where you had to get the ID card and if you just got close to the door, it worked? We can build that in Resident Rise. And I realized that I've, I'm so surprised that I don't see other people using this because it's such a good idea. So here's what we're going to do. Here is what we are going to do. First of all, behold, we have cooked a ton of stone. So I'm going to grab some because I'm going to need it. And I'm carrying a few things that might give away. But the first thing we're going to need is a computer, a humble, humble computer. This is Computercraft's computer, and they're really cool. Hello, computer. The connection's a little slow, but you know, hello world. Okay, so there is a mod, a mod from a prolific and very skilled modder called uh, Imibis, is I think. I've never heard his name successfully pronounced, but his mod, Imibis Peripherals, which is a series of computer craft peripherals, and that's what we're going to use. So, step one, let's get this done. So what do we need? Well, what we need is we're actually going to use his RFID, RFID stuff. So... What, what does that mean? RFIDs are like the tags in, re, in re, the real world. RFIDs are uh, tags that can be read by radio frequency um, f from a close range. You see them used in toll tags to go over bridges and, th and, and through tunnels. You see them used to uh, keep track of inventory and stores. We're going to use them for access control. So step one, we're going to make an RFID card. Step two, we're going to make an RFID reader. Now what do we need for this? Uh, I love when that messes up. We need a redstone torch. And I guess an iron, was it an iron bar? Yeah, I'm missing an iron bar. Oh no, not my iron. Iron is like the one thing. Right, so uh, let's get that done. Arfid reader. And then finally we need the writer. And the writer, as you can see, is pretty expensive. It needs a comparator, or not a comparator, a uh, repeater. It needs two blocks of gold. It needs I have some glass plant panes on me. And it needs some stone. So let's go ahead and get one of those. Pretty expensive block, but very cool for what it does. So first, we're going to be using the writer. Let's plonk it down over here. Pretty cool, right? So the first thing we can do is just take this and stick it in there. Look, it's actually in there. It's beeping. It's cool. All right. So let's fire up Lua. I'm not going to do too much computer craft on camera, but I will show you the basics of what I'm doing because this is such a cool tool. I'm amazed this doesn't end up in every mod pack because when I saw this, I was like, really? We can do that? Writer equals peripheral wrap. I think this would be the left side. Okay. So now I believe all I have to do is go writer.write. We'll just say it's how about lab access. Hmm. Be right back. Of course, it's writer in code. Let's just say uh, lab access. 
like that, like it's all high tech. Oh, um, and then that's right, the label of the card. So let's just say, um, let's just call it C or uh, Dave's card for now. Okay, so now uh, you can see that the machine is just going crazy, right? Just crazy. Uh, what it's doing is writing the card, and it actually takes a pretty long time to write that card. Um, you know, yada, yada, yada. Write the card, write the card. But once we have this card, we'll be able to take our reader, plonk it down, and we'll actually be able to use that. So we can let that guy go. And we'll say, how about uh, reader equals scroll dot wrap right. Okay, so now we have the reader, and we can do reader dot scan. And then we give it a range. I think the maximum range is normal. It's configurable, but I think it's five, right? And um, just do, uh, what is it, OS dot, well, let's see, uh, how about um, uh, did it, comma, data, OS dot pull event, RFID. I think it's RFID detected. So that takes about a second. Well, I'm going to cancel it because actually it wouldn't even cancel right now. Cancel. There we go. Okay. Is it done? Aha. It's done. So now if I mouse over it, it's Dave's card, right? So I can make that like a master card. So uh, let's see here. What is reader scan RFID underscore detected? Ah. Uh, I probably just said it. Try that one more time. Okay, so there we got data. See, it read lab access off my card. So now let me let me go through that again. I took this card. I encoded it. It's in my inventory. I don't have to even be carrying it, right? I can be carrying bread and go nom 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 and stave off death narrowly. But now, right, if I do this again. It'll, it'll wait a still second, and then it'll say data, lab access. So this should lead to an obvious application, right? All we have to do is put this computer block in there and have this guy emit a redstone signal for mm, maybe five, six seconds, and then go back to, uh, and, then, and then turn it off. So the door will open up, and then once we're through, it'll turn off. And it'll just keep the door open so long as it detects me nearby. And we can actually set the range really precisely so that the door can be kind of smart. That's the best part about it, I think, is that the door does, won't close on you if you have the card, which is one of the big problems with pulse doors. So I'm going to break this stuff down. Uh, I'll leave the reader here, or the writer here. But I'm going to break this stuff down, grab a few things I need, and go back, and we'll finish up this door build. Okay, so I came in here, I looked around, and it turns out there's a nightmarish cavern full of witches down here, uh, which is very difficult to deal with. So I'm not going to put these things below, I'm going to put it above, which is fine. Doesn't matter at all, really. So we got a computer up here, I got the peripheral, I set the output left to true. So now what we got to do is just kind of wire this up. And I could use, I have some red net cable here, but I'm not going to use it, I think, because it's just such a simple build. We start off step one. You can see I've already turned enabled the, the thing, so let's just put on some uh, cobble, good old-fashioned cobblestone here. It doesn't matter. I've used an, a regular block of stone bricks. So now, go like that. And as you can see, let's see if we can get that to work right. There we go. It's just one of those things where it's just got a... There we go. The interesting thing about pistons is they propagate redstone signals downwards. And then we can just run the same channel. Let's see. Over the top here. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily look like it connects, but it does. And then uh, we'll just put some uh, smooth stone right there. Come back to me. What is that? Okay. And uh, right here. And we'll put some right there. Oh no. Oh no. What have I done? What have I done? This is, uh, well, 
Note to self. Be careful up here. It's a little little tricky. But uh, fortunately, it didn't wash away anything because we were standing there. So let's just uh, make sure it doesn't happen again by filling that in. Okay. Um, finally. Oh, wait. Let me close that off. I'm going to have to build a little, little nerd pole here. We'll just go like uh, this. This should solve the problem. There we go. So now we have this this door, and it's sealed off. And all we have to do is manipulate the computer, which is kind of hard to reach, but I believe I can do it from that side. Um, so all I have to do, really, is write a program that uh, calls redstone set output left to true and just keeps scanning. And whenever it scans and finds something with lab access, then it will open the door. Um, I'll keep the program really simple for now, but eventually what we probably want to do is actually have it use a RedNet modem and kind of phone home to a master server and say, hey, is this person allowed in? And then I can make cards and revoke cards all without having to go and dig into my roof. But for now, I'm going to make it so that if I have to dig into my roof. So uh, I'm going to write a little bit of code. I'm going to do that off camera because it's just no fun to watch. And really, uh, it should be very simple. We just pull the event. We do it over and over again. Um, and then I will make sure to put a paste bin up for the code, and I'll show it in action. So for you, it will be like Alakazam. For me, it's probably going to take me about 10 minutes. So uh, see you in not 10 minutes. Okay. So uh, I think I got it done. So check it out. As I get closer, ta -da, I leave. Step away a little bit. Gives plenty of time for me to clear the door, and it closes. And I can get about this close, and it doesn't open, right? Because I said the radius is pretty close, so I have to get fairly close, right? And I could play with that radius a little bit, but it's kind of nice to not have it so that if you just casually walk by the door. Let me show you the code. It's not too hard. Let me just terminate the program. And edit the doorman. This program is not as good as I like. It can close on you, but it's getting late over here, so I will come back and revisit this and make it better. But it's already a little bit more complicated than I like for, for casual viewers because um, it uses the parallel function, which most people don't use because they're a little scared by it. Right? But uh, let's just check it out really quick. I have one function, scan forever, that just scans with a distance of four forever and then sleeps for one second. That one second sleep is just to make sure that we don't overwhelm the server. Next, we have a function check card that just checks if we have the data lab access. Now, of course, anyone who's seen this could make an ARFID card lab access, and then they could walk through this door. I think that's great. Come through the door. Uh, if you have made an ARFID card, you get the privilege of entering my lab, which is right now bereft of anything interesting. Here we are with um, basically a function that checks the card, if it tries to, to, out, uh, to lab access, then it sets the output left false for five seconds, and then re-enables it. This can close on you. I have a way to fix it, but it's a little too late. Anyways, the last call is the only part that's really interesting in this code. Everything else is just boring. Parallel wait for any. Uh, what that does is it takes two functions and waits for any of them to finish. So it actually runs them at the same time. Bet you didn't. Uh, a lot of co computer craft novices, I bet you didn't realize that you could do that. But yes. So this, the reason we do that is because we have one function that runs forever, just running scans. It try those scans don't return with anything interesting. They just give the OS pull events uh, or events to pull from the event queue ARFID detected. So we need to have two functions so that we can always be looking for interesting ARFID detected events. That said, um, it's it's a fairly straightforward thing. So the way I'm going to fix this eventually, and I'll of course post it when I do, is um, I am going to uh, update this by uh, making it so that it, instead of uh, opening the door, it simply records the time when the door was um, when the door was uh, last seen, or the, I guess I should say it record will record the time when a person with the right card was last seen, and then tell the door to open. It will then set a timer for five seconds and then keep doing what it's doing. Um, if it, the, the timer, when it fires, will have a custom event that will check and see if the, uh, the, the card really hasn't been detected by the timestamp. Sounds complicated. really isn't. I'll show you later. Anyway, so uh, I just got to button this up. Let's see if I can um, exit. How does this work? I've never done this uh, for anyone else before. Paste bin Dorman. Hmm. I'll have to get paste bin enabled. Uh, maybe maybe not enabled by default in the server. Uh, tri trivial to fix. But I'll have a paste bin URL. Look for it in the description of the video. I'll make sure to put it there. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to button up this thing. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm just showing off my little door creation here. It's all done now, all closed up, and it'll restart. Come on, Eternal. This is Eternal Density from the forums. No buttons. Just... Just Arfid cards. So I approach it again. Just opens right up. And uh, right now it'll close, and then it'll pick it up in a second, one second. It's on the ground behind you. Pretty easy build, not too complicated, but I'm pretty proud with it overall. Um, I mean, it's it's just a nice touch, right? And then you know the base has got a lot to do. We got to put in, you know, stairs, things like that. But we're getting there. We'll have a base soon, and as you can see, some of my rubber trees have already started to come in. So I'll be able to start making other things too, because I need I need rubber. All right, well, uh, folks, and this hasn't been the best episode. I've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, mod pack work. Uh, and real life work and uh, photography of all things, but um, in the interim, um, I've, I'll do the best I can to keep releasing. I do like recording and I do like hearing your comments. If you have anything that you'd like me to build, uh, go ahead and let me know because I'm building a new base here and I'm going to be building stuff. If you'd like me to be use it to automate my base with any particular thing, um, we have Infinite Tubes, Forge Extras, Mine Factor Reloaded. Applied Energistics. I mean, we have almost all the mods. Anything but Red Power 2, we basically have, because I love that sort of stuff. So if you want me to see me do more stuff like that, uh, go for it. I'm going to be updating Mine Factory Reloaded, and I'm really excited to start using his new mining method. It's so cool. And I have to do a little bit of work before I get there, but I'll be doing it in between episodes. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please, I'm told that I'm supposed to ask you, like or subscribe if you like it and would like to see more. Honestly, I'll do more even if you don't, so yeah.